So in this example, we want to graph f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 over x minus 3. We want to find and label all asymptotes, x-intercepts and y-intercepts, and we want to state the domain. So we're going to follow our process for graphing rational functions. Um, so let's begin by rewriting our function over here, f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 over x minus 3. And we want to make sure we don't have any common factors in the numerator and denominator. In this case, we do not because the numerator cannot factor. Um, it's not possible for us to factor the 2x squared minus 5x plus 1, so we don't have any common factors. So let's start by stating the domain. The domain will be all real numbers except whatever causes the denominator to equal 0. So if I take x minus 3, set that equal to 0, then x equals 3. So x cannot be 3. Our domain is going to be all real numbers except 3. Or if we write that in interval notation, x can be anything from negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity. So that also gives us our vertical asymptotes. So in this case, we only have one vertical asymptote, and that is going to be the vertical line x equals 3. Two, we want to talk about horizontal asymptotes and oblique asymptotes. Well, in this case, notice that the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 1. Because the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, that means we do not have any horizontal asymptotes. So horizontal asymptotes, we don't have any. There are none. Now the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 1. So the degree of the numerator is 1 bigger than the degree of the denominator. So we are going to have an oblique asymptote. And so we need to figure out what that oblique asymptote is. And we can do that by dividing. So I'm going to take 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 and divide by x minus 3. What do I multiply x by to get 2x squared? 2x. Multiply back, 2x times x is 2x squared, 2x times minus 3 is minus 6x. Distribute subtraction, this will become minus, this will become plus. 2x squared minus 2x squared goes away. Minus 5x plus 6x is x, and I can drop down the plus 1. What do I multiply x by to get x? 1. Multiply back. 1 times x is x. 1 times minus 3 is minus 3. Distribute the subtraction. This becomes minus. This becomes plus. I get a remainder of 4. So our oblique asymptote is going to be the quotient here. So we get the equation y equals 2x plus 1. So this is our oblique asymptote, y equals 2x plus 1. Next, we want to find the x-intercepts. So step three, we're going to find the x-intercepts. And we can do that by taking the numerator and setting it equal to 0. So I need to solve this quadratic equation. Well, we already discussed the fact that this doesn't factor. So in order to solve this quadratic equation, I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So a equals 2, b equals negative 5, and c equals 1. So our quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, that's going to be the negative of negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 1, and that's all over 2 times 2. So that is positive 5 plus or minus the square root 
Underneath that square root, negative 5 squared is 25. And we've got 4 times 2 times 1, so that's minus 8. 25 minus 8 is 17. So we've got 5 plus or minus the square root of 17, and that's all over 2 times 2, which is 4. So really what we have there is two different things. We have 5 plus the square root of 17 divided by 4, or we have 5 minus the square root of 17 divided by 4. So those x-intercepts are 5 plus the square root of 17 divided by 4, comma 0, and 5 minus the square root of 17 divided by 4, 0. Those are the exact x-intercepts, but those aren't very useful. So if we get approximate, 5 plus the square root of 17 divided by 4, that is about 2.28. So this is approximately 2.28 comma 0. And if I do 5 minus the square root of 17 divided by 4, that is about 0 0.22. So this is 0 0.220. 0. That's a little more useful. Um, for locating our x-intercepts. So just a little uh, to the right of 0 and just a little bit to the right of 2. Step 4, we need to find our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is going to be f of 0. So that's going to be 2 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 1 over 0 minus 3. Well, 2 times 0 squared is 0, minus 5 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is going to be 1, 0 minus 3 is negative 3, so our y-intercept is negative 1 third, so we have the point 0, negative 1 third for our y-intercept. So we know we have vertical asymptote of x equals 3, we don't have any horizontal asymptotes, we have an oblique asymptote of y equals 2x plus 1, we have x-intercepts of approximately 2.28 and 0 0.22, and we have a y-intercept of negative one-third. So we're going to put that all together and graph it on the next sheet. So if I bring in my graph, again we know we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So let's make this 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And really that's negative 10. So again, I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, which is going to be here. So if I draw my dotted vertical line, here is x equals 3. I know I have no horizontal asymptote, but I have an oblique asymptote of y equals 2x plus 1. So that oblique asymptote has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 1, so that oblique asymptote is going to cross here, and then from there if I rise 2 and run 1, that point will be on the oblique asymptote. Rise 2, run 1, that point will be on the oblique asymptote. Rise 2, run 1, that point will be on the oblique asymptote. I could also go down 2 and to the left 1, down 2 to the left 1, and so on, and get all of these points on our oblique asymptote. So our oblique asymptote is going to be this line here, y equals 2x plus 1. Now I know that I have a y-intercept at negative 1 third, which is going to be about right here. So that point right there is the point 0, negative 1 third. And I know I have x-intercepts at 0 0.22, which is about right here, and at 2.28, which is about here. So this point right here is approximately 0 0.22, 0, 
and this point right here is approximately 2.28 comma 0. So how does that help me graph this? Well, I'm, I'm asymptotic to this oblique asymptote, and I'm asymptotic here, and I've got three points that are here in this area. So that means this graph is going to be asymptotic here, so it's going to keep getting closer and closer to, to that slanted line. It's going to cross here at the y-axis. It's going to cross here at the x-axis. It's going to go above. Somehow it's going to turn around and come back through this and then go back down and be asymptotic over here. What I don't know for sure is what's going to happen on this side. On this side, one of two things is going to happen. It could, it could be asymptotic here and come up like this and be asymptotic here, or it could be up here asymptotic and turn and be asymptotic here. I've got to figure out which. I suspect it's going to be this up here, but i got to find a point or two to, uh, to make sure. Um, I think 1 will actually do it. So if I substitute in a number like 4, which is to the right of my vertical asymptote, so I want to find f of 4. Now remember our equation is f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 over x minus 3. So f of 4 is going to be 2 times 4 squared minus 5 times 4 plus 1, and that's going to be over 4 minus 3. Well, 4 squared is 16, times 2 is 32, so that's going to be 32. 5 times 4 is 20, so minus 20 plus 1, and that's going to be over 4 minus 3, which is 1. Well, 32 minus 20 is uh, 12, and 12 plus 1 is 13. So I have 13 over 1, which is 13. So I'm going to have the point 4, 13 on this graph. So here's 4. 10, 11, 12, 13 is going to be around here. And so that tells me I'm up in this area. So this graph is going to somehow go through that point and turn around and be asymptotic to our oblique asymptote. It's also going to be asymptotic like this. So this is what the graph of our rational function, f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 over x minus 3, looks like. If I bring back in my calculator, we can just verify that. So parenthesis, 2x squared minus 5x plus 1, close parenthesis, divided by parenthesis x minus 3, close parenthesis. If I try a zoom 6, I am seeing this portion of the graph right here, which looks correct. But what I'm not seeing is this part up here. That's because that is above my y max. So I'm going to look higher. So I'm going to change my y max to be 20 and regraph, and there I see this portion of the graph as well. Just for the sake of it, if I enter my oblique asymptote, y equals 2x plus 1, I can see how that is occurring there as well. So I do feel good about our graph. This is what it looks like. So that completes this example.